look everybody! It's snowing! Woo! Welcome to an Impact Gamers tutorial for Click Team Fusion where we're going to look at making it snow on your level. So here's what I made earlier. It's only a couple of events, eight of them, um, with multiple actions happening and I'll show you how to make it. So if you load up Click Team Fusion and start a new application and go into your first frame First of all, we're going to set a background, and so we're going to insert a new object, uh, back, not a backdrop, a quick backdrop. Now, quick background is just a solid color to start off with, and if you really want a solid color, you can, in your frame, change the background color here, and it'll just change it on the frame. But what we're going to do is change it from being uh, in its properties, its settings from a solid color to a gradient. And we're going to have it white at the top. It won't be at the top yet, but and a bluey sky color at the bottom. There we go. And vertical gradient. So the white snow in the top of the sky will come downwards. There we go. I don't want to do anything with this now. I want to leave it exactly where it is. And to save me issues later, I'm going to lock it. So I'm going to right click on the keyboard and I'm going to choose lock. Now that means I can't select it unless I hold down control and shift so the keys in the bottom left of your keyboard um, control shift and then click on it and then it's activated again but I'll lock it again because I don't want to do anything with it. The other thing you can do is you can um, under arrange unlock everything in your game and that'll unlock it but we'll leave it locked Next, we're going to add in the snowflake. So I'm going to insert a new object, active, because it'll be moving. Click to put it down. Um, double click on it, or press enter, or right click and edit to get up this little editing program. Now, because snowflakes are white, and because the chessboard, the checkerboard pattern at the background is white and grey, it's really hard to see. So I'm just going to clear it and fill it in with a dark blue colour to help for contrast. And I'm just going to draw a little snowflake, a six-sided snowflake, because it's so important to be scientifically accurate. Then um, There we go, a six-sided snowflake. And then I'll click on the fill bucket, choose transparent, and put it back. Um, it doesn't really matter where the center is, the hot spot, um, but I'll pop it in the middle. And it does matter about cropping, but I'll do that anyway, just because it's neat and lovely to do. So there we go. So there's my snowflake. I will name it. Snowflake. At the moment it's not going to move so I'm going to change its movement. Now this is really basic tutorial um, so I'm just going to choose a really basic movement, bouncing ball. Uh, initial direction I'm just going to put it currently as down and the speed I'll slow it down a bit. Let's say speed 6. Now in my event editor, because when I run that I will just have a lovely snowflake hit the bottom of the screen and be gone forever. And we will never see that again. But in the event editor, I will say a new condition. Ah, oh, my snowflake's there, but it's white on white. So a nice way around that is if you select your object and go to its about properties, you can change its icon. And it is a picture of it there. You can't see it, but you have to click on that. Click edit. And let's fill it in with that dark blue color again. Great. Now... It's a little bit easier. New condition, snowflake, position, test it. If it goes down the bottom, left or right, or even up, we'll include that. Not that it's likely that snow will go upwards, but it could happen. Um, if it leaves the play area, we will say movement wrap around. So currently it's only going to touch the bottom and just start at the top. So it will go all the way to the bottom. And when it does, start back at the top. And that's a really basic way to add a snowflake in. And uh, here it comes again. There we go. Coming down the screen again. Let's make some multiple copies of these. Um, the quickest way I find is to drag in several of them because it's really hard to do anything other than drag them in because they're so teeny tiny. Oh, I nearly did. You could hold control and drag if you're really accurate. Now that background's locked. There's a whole load of snowflakes. Now, if I click on the icon for snowflake, well, click off it and then click on it, it'll select them all which allows me to copy, I could do control C or edit copy and edit paste. And I can just shove these down. 
Now that's quite uniform and doesn't look very snow like. There they are, coming down and down. So let's get them to wiggle. I'm going to get them to wiggle independently. So I need, rather than make a counter for each of them, which would be crazy um, and not work, I'm going to use their alterable values. So their alterable values are counters that are stored within the objects, unique to each and every object, even if it's the same object. So a new one, and I'm going to double click to change its name. I'm going to call this uh, change direction. There we go. And we'll go back to the event editor and we will say a new condition. And on the timer, every, not second, but every hundredth of a second, uh, I'm going to say that I want the right click for a tick, right click, ultra value um, uh, for the snowflake. I want to set the change direction to be random uh, up to number uh, 40. So on average, that'd be every four seconds, it would pick a number that I choose. So it's going to think of a random number between 0 and 39. Random doesn't include the number you set. It's every number below it from 0. So th 0 to 39. So I'm going to say a new condition. If it does think of um, the number 0, which we'll do at the beginning, which is useful for us, then I want to direction set a direction. And I'm just going to choose these diagonal ones so it can be floaty or oh, maybe you close those as well um, so now they're all wiggling back and forth and being much more snowflake like and you could just stop there and you could build your game you could put your character in Let's, I'm double clicking just to save time double click double click a quick way to add an active object there we could add an active object in there and we could have a special rule saying a new condition special always and right click on the snowflake always order bring to front and these can be our foreground snowflakes there we go so let's add some background snowflakes to make it more exciting um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a new object active double click um, I'm going to clear it and I'm just going to draw a white squiggle and there's a white snowball in fact I'm going to make it even smaller than that not that that's easy to see. Let's do the trick fill blue. Uh, let's just make it smaller. There we go. Perfectly formed snowball. And let's select clear, fill that in, shrink it down. Right. So we've got our tiny little, let's rename that and call it Snock. Call it Snoke. It's an evil Lord Sith. No, call it Snow. Uh, Ball or snowflake two, whatever you want. Right now, this is going to have a similar movement. Let's give it a bouncing ball movement. Uh, let's make it move. If it's in the background, it's going to move slower. So they moved at six, did they? And so this guy, um, oh there he is up there. <laughs> I don't know why I'm clicking. Um, this guy can move at three. Then um, and let's do the trick and click on about changing the icon to being. Um, well, let's make it a different color blue, so it's easy to distinguish. That's a, yep, that's enough. Different. Okay, pop it in. Let's go to Event Editor and let's copy some of these rules. I'm gonna actually really quick way. I'm gonna select rules one, two, and three. So click on the number one, hold down shift, click on the number three. It's just a quick way of creating your rules that are the same and pull them down to the word new condition. And there we go. I've got them again now. But this time I'm gonna move the ticks by dragging just setting this a quick way to do all the same things and double click to change the object so I could have gone about it from the beginning but I was too lazy I could have clicked new condition if snowball leaves play area and wrap but our dragging and dropping is a really quick way and clicked infusion to save time so let's just run the frame I'll be tricky to follow this there he is oh hopefully he's gonna go off is he gonna go off this side come on this side uh... No, he changed direction. Last minute. Oh, 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 is he going to go? Is he gonna... Yeah, there he is. So that's working okay. And we'll do a similar trick to making lots of versions of him. So I'm just going to pull lots of versions of the snowball onto the screen. As randomly as possible would be good. Right, once I've got a nice long line, I will click off and then click on again. Oh, that's nice. That's selected them already. But anyway, I could click off and click on. 
click off onto this one. Control C, Control V. Let's paste these down. Right, and then in the event editor, this always, always bring these to front and order. Let's bring these to the back. Um, I'm going to press F8 to run the application. There we go. And we've got those falling down. But in my little example over here, I've added some platforms. And I've also made it that the snow sticks to the platforms. And I'll show you how to do that in my final step. So what we're going to do is in our frame editor, we're going to add a backdrop. I'm just going to stretch it out. Double click. I'm going to fill it in red, some kind of contrasting color. Um, hold down control, make a few copies of that. Let's put one up here as well. A bit big actually. There we go. And I also need to give it a obstacle type in its runtime options because nothing can collide with it until it is one of these things. So let's say it's a platform for a platform game. And now we can have a new condition that if a snowball collides with a backdrop object, so an obstacle or platform that we put in, then what I want it to do is a few things. I want, first of all, it to paste itself into the background, it to become part of a background. And you could have it becoming an obstacle or a platform so that you can stand on top of it if you're playing the game, or you can have it as just a background effect, so you can say not an obstacle. Um, even Possibly no effect on collisions. I've never used that, though, but um, I normally choose it to become a platform or an obstacle but anyway uh, we'll say it's not an obstacle and we'll paste it into the background and then so that we don't run out of snowflakes we're going to position it back just back to zero back to zero is the top of the screen so a snowflake will come down hit here and it'll reposition at the top to come down again it will hopefully repopulate so these here are not the active objects the active objects are being sent back to the top and as you can see, the snow is collecting there. Fantastic. Now, the snow is not collecting on top of the other snow, but it could do if we did allow it to be a platform. So let's right click, edit, and change this to become a platform. So now it will collide when it collides with another one. Let's see if we can get any that are sticking on top of each other. Is that one going to do it? Yeah, that one's stuck. And that one's stuck on top. And you see it's stuck on top too much. There's actually a gap underneath there. So what I'm going to do is edit this. And I'm going to double click on the tick to get the event list editor. Now, I don't often do this in tutorials. The event list editor, I normally get people to avoid. But it's useful here because the order of these events will matter. Double click. So it pastes into background, then sets the Y position. But I want to insert, I want to say that the position goes a bit lower before it pastes in. So find out its current position, its current Y position, and we'll just add one or two, let's say one. We'll add one. So we add one, then we paste in the background, then we move it to the top. And if these are in the wrong order, we could move them around, but that's exact order. We wanna drop it down, paste in background, move it to the top. Well, now we can't run the application from here. We have to go back into one of the other editors. And there we go. Now, when multiple ones collide, is that one going to collide? Mm, nearly. They'll sync onto it. There we go, that one. Sync onto each other a bit more. And then you can, um, if I close this, you can have the lovely effect of being able to stand on top of the snow. Let's let it collect a bit more. So all I've done here is I've added in another active object and I've made it a platform movement and I've added the one extra rule that we don't have is that when the player collides with the background it stops because if you don't have that rule he'll fall through or she'll fall through so there we go so now you have snow outside in the real world and you can add it inside your games as well okay any questions just comment below and I'll try and get back to you